Hello there and welcome to my video presentation. Today I'll be analysing the two films I made at Ravensbourne University and how I managed to contribute to my projects and analysing the strengths and weaknesses of my films. This film had to be called All the Time in the World and had to be within three minutes long and the film had to reflect the title All the Time in the World. So for our film, it had to be about a kid that's basically living in this lovely house for most of his life and is being pretty much neglected by his parents. It's the end of the world. The allegory to the title All the Time in the World is that they had all the time in the world to pay attention to this kid, but they never chose to, and instead just chose to neglect him, and that now it's too late. And that even when the world is ending, that they don't even choose to like pay attention to him. So for this film, the role I did was that I was the director. However, I did not write this film. So this was quite difficult, directing this film, as I've never really directed a film that I've never actually written before. So therefore, this was an interesting experience. Although, I did manage to come up with the twist at the end for the film, just because the writer for this film, Nathan, struggled to come up with one. The biggest obstacle for this film was that I had to change the idea completely just because we were unable to get actors and they bailed on us at the last minute because we weren't going to pay for their travel and refreshments and food. And so therefore, we had to use crew members as actors basically, including myself. So therefore, we had to switch the idea for it being about instead of parents neglecting a kid and the kid ending the world because of it, it was about a guy being bullied by his flatmate and therefore resulting in him ending the world and launching a nuclear strike. Because of actors bailing on us, we therefore had to push the filming days back several times. And this therefore meant that there was very little time for our editor, Dan, to edit the film. And this resulted in the film being longer as he did not have enough time to do a split screen at the beginning, which would have cut off at least a minute. So therefore, the scene with the kid on the laptop and the flatmate doing the drawing in the other room should have been the same scene, but a split screen, but it wasn't. And it made the pacing much slower. My contribution to the story is that I came up with the twist, which was that the kid was actually doing the nuclear strike that the parents are watching on TV. But obviously this had to be changed to the flatmate, as we didn't have the actors to play the parents. But I thought this was very creative input, as this made the story much more interesting, as it actually has a payoff at the end rather than just a concept. The one thing I was very pleased about was the cinematography in my film. As you can notice, all the shots in my film are used for a reason. As you might notice, a lot of shots for the main character are looking down at him. This is to make him seem more innocent. In contrast with the other character, where he's looking up at him from a low angle, this therefore makes him more intimidating and reinstates that he is the antagonist of the film. I was also impressed with very specific shots, like the shot where, where the character Ollie sits down and he switches the TV on and he listens to the TV news report, whilst you see in the corner of the frame in the background a kid typing on the laptop. This is a slight hint to the twist and making him seem very sort of creepy and mysterious of him sort of lurking in the background. Another shot I was really impressed with was the shot of Ollie shouting at me whilst I was typing on the laptop, hacking the nuclear codes, and the way it focuses on Ollie and then focuses on the headphones, basically showing how I am completely in my own bubble and uninterested in what he's saying and completely distracted with what I'm doing and that I can't hear what Ollie is saying because of the music playing on the headphones which you hear in the film but unfortunately the way it was edited it doesn't really convey that the music playing is what the main character is listening to and that's why you have a whole bunch of other close-ups on the headphones to sort of show that he's completely zoned out in his own world. As a result of my cinematography, it actually served a purpose in the story. Overall, the film was a very unsatisfying result, mainly because of the actors bailing on us, which led to us basically switching our idea on the spot on the shooting day, and 
basically we were completely dis disorganized and didn't really know what we were doing and basically we had to like change certain scenes and change the idea completely and I think if we st just stuck with the original idea then we, we would have made a film that would have been reasonably engaging but unfortunately it wasn't and that was because the lack of anything really happening because the problem is in the film was that there was a twist at the end which would have which is interesting and it was a good and it was a good unexpected twist but there wasn't really much build up to it so there was nothing that can really grasp the audience's attention to keep them watching until the end Come on. this film was violent delights and for this film i was the director and i also wrote it as well and this film was about a serial killer that is making a documentary of himself doing his killing career the main issue i had was that there was a disconnect between the group and the director this mostly started after I wrote the script, as Balao and Marius were very demanding that I change certain bits and go with a certain version of the script that I did not necessarily want it. But eventually I did commit to all the changes Balao and Marius wanted. But it made me feel as if I wasn't really the director and in charge of writing my film. And then, because originally in the script, it says as if it's like a found footage film basically. But unfortunately, they didn't really understand that at all. They just thought that the only elements of found footage it was basically just him talking to the camera at the beginning and somewhat at the end and that was it but that wasn't the case it was almost as if the main character was almost vlogging the whole thing essentially as a result of this this led to us on the filming days basically filming two separate films and as a result of this this was quite chaotic and none of us really knew what we were doing and maybe if i just worked with balao and miles and maybe the shots of the film wouldn't have been so one-dimensional and bland looking and i would have got what i would have wanted or that if i communicated better that i wanted the film to be found footage then i would have got what i wanted a problem i had was that my idea was supposed to be a 10 minute film rather than a five minute film so originally i wrote 10 pages for this film but unfortunately the time limit was five minutes so basically i cut and pasted all the essential elements and plot points of the 10 page script and basically pasted them in a 5 page script and sort of tied them together and wrote some extra bits but unfortunately this therefore made it seem look very looked very rushed and as a result of this the story didn't feel very fleshed out and authentic also another issue i had with the film is the final edit where it completely drif drifted away from the vlogging style completely and cut it out very essential character development moments including including in the pub scene where Steve is essentially saying how he reacts to people and how he sees society and how that affects his killing career. The reason why I was so irritated that the vlogging star wasn't included in the film was that the whole creepiness of it was that the serial killer was talking directly to the audience, making it even more unsettling. There's a quite a unique use of storytelling and it's never really been done before. And originally I wasn't really going to show barely any of the murders. I wanted to keep it more of a mystery so the, that the audience could use their imagination. But my group never really saw that and constantly disagreed with that constantly. And it just made it very difficult to really finalise on decisions. And in the end it wasn't really me. Target audience for my film are people ages 16 to 30. This is because the film is quite an adult subject matter of as it's very dark and violent and therefore it's not only suitable for like a younger audience but it's not really but in other ways it does appeal to young people as young people are quite often very into violence and therefore they do actually are very interested in serial killer documentaries another thing i was very disappointed about so the montage scene was way too long in the film because in the script it's supposed to be 15 seconds but in the film it's over one minute which really added to the pacing and made it so much slower Overall, I'm very unsatisfied as the final result isn't really my film and it's mostly the group's film and not really mine. The thing to learn for the future is that maybe be a bit more understanding on explaining people what your idea is rather than just expecting them to know what it is based on what the script says. Also, I think I should have planned the script much better rather than just letting my creative mind go wild and just write whatever comes in my head pretty much. 
Thank you for watching my video presentation. I know this has been quite a hard and painful task for me, reviewing my fairly disappointing films I have made within the second term of Ravensbourne University. But I hope you have enjoyed it.